Welcome back. Today's forensic lesson topic is deductive reasoning. Uh, if you have notes, feel free to fill those notes in as we go through. If you don't have notes, um, pre-filled out notes, uh, and you're taking your own notes, feel free to pause the video at any point in time. I'm going to rush through this lesson, um, and then you just kind of rewind and pause as needed. Before we jump into our deductive reasoning lesson, I want to go back and do a quick recap of the last lesson where we discussed observation skills. Now, it's no surprise that having good observation skills is crucial for effective investigative work. Forensic investigators have to make a conscious effort to observe and then perceive the things that they take in through their senses. Now, this is also important in the case of eyewitnesses. So having good observation skills is not just important for forensic investigators, but also for those people who are witness to a crime and then they have to communicate what they see, what they hear, what they know with investigators. So we want those eyewitnesses to also have good observation skills. Now, I also mentioned in the previous lesson that the brain is highly selective. And what this means is of all the thousands and thousands of pieces of information that bombards the brain on a daily basis, only a few of those things are stored as what's called STMs, short-term memories. Um, and even fewer of those things are stored long-term. So the brain just kind of is very picky about what it takes in, what it holds on to, uh, and that's important in for forensic investigative work. So what are some strategies that can be used? And we're thinking about investigators here. So when somebody is working a crime scene, what are some strategies that can be used to keep the brain from losing Im information like it's designed to do? So here's some things that make a good observer. So number one, make a conscious effort to examine the environment. So think about an investigator going into a crime scene. They're going to want to look around the crime scene and just be very conscious of taking in everything that they see, that they smell even, that they hear, all the things that they notice. Number two, observe everything slowly. So we're going to come back to this in a future lesson where we talk about crime scene processes and the steps that investigators go through to actually work a crime scene. And you're going to hear this again. We're going to talk about scanning the crime scene, how that's done. But during this step of crime scene investigation, um, investigators are making observations and they're doing this slowly, as slowly as possible. Sometimes with some, some circumstances, you're not able to work as slow as maybe an investigator would like. Um, but the idea, if there's time, if time allows, um, observing everything slowly is important. Number three, making connections to observations. You're going to want to relate observations to prior knowledge. And then don't jump to conclusions. So this is a big one. Um, make sure that you are um, slow and controlled in your thoughts. And don't jump to conclusions. Just because something was a conclusion in the last crime scene that an investigator worked does not mean it's necessarily the same conclusion in the next crime scene. And so investigators have to make sure that they're very aware not to jump to conclusions. Um, also, in a future lesson, we're going to talk about the importance of photographing the crime scene and taking notes and sketching the crime scene. Um, so I'm just going to leave this here. Investigators are going to want to photograph and take notes. This is going to help them with their observation skills. In the event that they forget something, um, they can go back and reference those notes and photographs. All right, so deductive reasoning by definition, and make sure you pause the video if you need to to get down this definition. So deductive reasoning is deriving consequences from facts using a series of logical steps. So in other words, it's a logical method of piecing together a bunch of random information in a way that it makes uh, it possible to draw a conclusion. And that's the goal of a forensic investigator is to ultimately draw a conclusion. All right, if you're in class today, we're going to be doing this activity. But um, those of you listening, we're just going to skip through that. Um, so deductive reasoning is a simple form of arriving at a conclusion by joining two or more pieces of information together. So deductive reasoning is a lot like putting together a, a puzzle. But imagine it's a thousand piece puzzle 
you don't have a picture reference. So, you know, when you're putting together a puzzle, you might have the front of the box as a guide. Imagine putting together a thousand piece puzzle with no picture, no guide. Uh, also imagine doing that where you have about 250 missing pieces. Uh, and sometimes the pieces from another puzzle are thrown into your puzzle. So investigators uh, have to use deductive reasoning, but it is a lot like putting together a puzzle where you have a bunch of missing pieces and random pieces from another puzzle. It is very difficult. So forensic investigators do not have like a little crystal ball that recaps all the events of the crime. They have to use what they observe and draw conclusions from those observations. It uh, refers to rational thinking, which involves generating a hypothesis and examining all the possible outcomes before settling for a reasonable conclusion. And a good example uh, is like what you see here on the screen. So we have three knowns and then a lot of missing information. So let's say we're a forensic investigator and here's three things that we know. We know a bloody knife is found next to a deceased woman. We know that that woman was stabbed and we know the blood on the knife through testing matches the victim's DNA. Okay, so we don't know anything else surrounding the events that took place. All we know is we have a bloody knife we have a dead woman, the woman was stabbed, and the blood on the knife belongs to the woman, the victim. So based on that, we might draw a conclusion. We might say the knife was used to kill the woman, which is a logical conclusion. And so this is exactly what deductive reasoning is. It's taking little pieces of the puzzle, if you will, with a lot of missing pieces and sort of visualizing the whole picture, even though those puzzle pieces are missing. Deductive reasoning, uh, remember, may not be the most accurate way of solving a problem because we all know that assumptions can be wrong. And I say remember because in the last lesson, I showed you a picture of an ice cream cone and it was pink and I asked you what flavor it was. And most of the time I get the answer strawberry or bubble gum or cherry when in fact it was vanilla. You assumed or most people assume that since the ice cream is pink, it must be bubble gum, cherry strawberry. Um, so just remember, assumptions can be wrong, but it is what investigators have. Um, since they don't have that crystal ball that shows them if they got the answer right or they can't see all the events that surround a crime, they have to rely on deductive reasoning uh, to draw conclusions. All right, so if you're in class today, we're going to do some deductive reasoning practice. If you are joining us uh, online by listening to this video and watching this video, then we are done for the day. And I will see you in the next lesson.